Hey, good morning and good day, everybody. I'm Steve Farrell, a uh, co-founder and the executive director of Humanities Team. I'm coming to you live from a snowy, icy day here in Boulder, Colorado. And you can see on the screen who my special guest is today. Wow, really been looking forward to this. Neil, thank you so much for joining me. I'll give him a proper introduction in a moment, but uh, thank you for being here. You're welcome. It's nice to be here. And you, don't, you can dispense with the introduction because if people don't know who I am, they're in the wrong place. <laughs> okay, well, uh, so let's start with shout outs. So shout out to uh, Neil Donald Walsh's crowd, Conversations with God, all of the people uh, involved with CWG Connect, uh, all of your friends all over the world, our Humanity Stream Plus friends who are here in the uh, green room with us and who might want to come on camera a little later, Humanity's team friends, uh, John Raymer and the Sign Network that broadcasts out on the internet. So. Big uh, shout out to all of you. Thanks for being here with us. Uh, now, of course, this is a live program. So that means during the program, if you have questions, comments, things that you want to bring in to, uh, that you want me to throw at Neil during the hour, uh, the sooner you in the chat uh, share what you'd like me to bring to Neil, the better chance that I can bring it to him here during the hour. So, uh, okay, now our theme today is uh, activism training for the Changing Humanities Future Initiative. Uh, I guess I'll dispense, I feel a little odd, me not giving you a proper introduction, Neil, but I'll skip it if you want here. <laughs> I wrote a couple of books and that's, you know, some people have read them around the world and it, it, it opens a few people to a, a new thought. You have to be kind of an idea hero <laughs> to embrace the thoughts that are presented in the Conversations with God books, but that's all that has to be said. If people haven't heard about Conversations with God and that series of books, then what are they doing here? So I presume that most <laughs> people have at least heard about them. And so here we go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, we're going to, when we talk about activist training for the Changing Humanities Future Initiative, Guess what's igniting this whole initiative? You got it, the Conversations with God series, and in particular, book nine, which is called Conversations with God, book four, Awaken the Species. So we're gonna talk about all of that stuff during the hour. And again, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, boy, we got a great hour in store here. So Neil, maybe where we, where we can start, you know, before we get to the activist training, this is for our initiative called Changing Humanity's Future and wow, talking about something that was shot out of a cannon here. My God, little did we know, huh, Neil? Back in the spring of last year, as we were back and forth and saying, you know, we were, and we were talking about these conversations that people were having in kitchens and living rooms and, you know, the, all the hand wringing of, oh boy, you know, Ukraine war and climate change and smoke and fires. And we were saying, where, where is conscious living in the conversation here? My God, we, we need to change humanity's future. Uh, yeah, I'm so, so glad to be able to share this time with all of you who are here today, because this is, whether whether all of us know it or not, this is a special moment in human history in which we have an opportunity to turn an important message that we've all received in the Conversations with God Dialogue into something real and tangible that could change our future for the better forever. I'm assuming, of course, that most of you have, have had a positive response to the CWG messages. So I want you to hear about uh, this initiative again, if you haven't become real clear about what it's about, hear directly from me and from my collaborator, Steve. And we'd like to invite those of you who resonate with it to become part of this people's effort to elevate the campaign and pro propel it uh, into the world at large. I consider this to be the most important initiative that you and I could ever undertake in our lives. So thanks in advance for being here today and hearing what we have to say. This initiative could make our lives, yours and mine, more impactful than we might have ever imagined. You know, our time on Earth, your time and mine, could be on a personal level incredibly meaningful to those who share this planet with us now and to those who will live after us. It's not an exaggeration to say that families everywhere, their children and their grandchildren, will have their lives touched by choices we can make today. So, you know, if you would indulge me here, thanks for letting me put into just three words what I'm talking about. 
those three words are change humanity's future. And that's what we're discussing here. And we're talking about how to do that. How, I mean, how can we actually participate on a personal level? And that's what this activist training is all about, because if we decide to become activists in this process of changing humanity's future, that is, if we decide to not just watch the parade as it passes by, and even cheer the parade on, which is a nice way to support it, but if we decide to actually step into the parade, and then to actually lead the parade, to step to the front of the parade and lead the parade, that could make what you do in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years of your life more meaningful on this planet than you might ever thought possible. And that's what the activist training is about. It's about jumping into a process, a program that shares with you how you can share with the world what we know you deeply believe inside of you, but maybe no one's ever really given you the tools. You know what's sad? I don't want to talk for a half hour, Steve, but let me just conclude my opening comment by saying this. You know what's sad for me? When I was a young child uh, in school, you know, and even in high school and frankly, even later in college, you know, for, for the few months that I attended college before they threw me out. <laughs> but in all of my years of education, no one shared with me information about how I could assist myself and those around me and the world at large to move to a better place, to move to a place where we more deeply understood who we are, why we're here, and how we can make life an extraordinary adventure and a wonderful experience for our children and our grandchildren. Nobody, nobody told me anything about that. And so the activist training is going to fill that gap. It's going to fill that void. It's going to provide you with an opportunity to, yes, to learn some of the skills and become deeply familiar with the concepts and how to message those concepts, how to share those concepts with others in a way that can change and touch people's lives. And by the way, you don't have to write best-selling books or have a television program or be a movie star or, or for that matter, find a way to touch 16 million people. You know, if you touch... God said to me, if you touch one other person in your life in a way that causes them to see who they really are and why we're really here and all that we're going to be talking about here today, if you touch one or two other people, imagine if all of us did that. We're already numbering in the hundreds and thousands because who you touch will touch others and they will touch others and they will touch others. And finally, you see a snowball rolling downhill. We're talking about the domino effect. So thanks for being here today and listening to what we have to say. And, you know, you got to be careful, Steve, because if you throw the ball over to me, I'll talk for an hour and a half about stopping. So well, here beautiful. again. No, this was, this was, uh, the, you know, this was setting the table here, Neil. So we've got the napkins and the fork and the knife and the spoon and the tablecloth all laid out here. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, so let's just announce something here as we dive into this discussion. Uh, we've never shared this before, so this is the very first time Neil and I have had this discussion, and the first time we're going to talk about activist training. So here it is. Neil and I have been working on a design for a 16-module activist training program that will be free. Uh, we're planning for it to be available around May, and we're going we're gonna, to, man, we are going to put this so out there in the world, you're not going to believe it. Yes, all of the Humanities Team channels and Conversations with God channels, but on social media, we're going to promote this like crazy, uh, you know, in a free 16-module program all the way through, not a, not a one-hour webinar, but deep, rigorous uh, training on all of the things that are central to living consciously. And yes, uh, much of this Wisdom came straight from the Conversations with God book, especially uh, book, uh, the ninth book that came out, which is called Conversations with God, book four, Awaken the Species. And, and I'll just say, and this would be my way of describing the book, I don't think Neil would describe it that way, but 
So for me, of course, as he shares, and as we know, we're on the conscious journey, we're all having conversations with God all the time, right? All day long. Uh, but there was a big, important, I'm going to call it global uh, conversation that Neil convened with the books, where just we can just get some basic wisdom, basic vision, a basic uh, journey, de- a path, or a map out in the open, so everybody can, could, could get these, these questions that we all have. Of, Why the heck am I here? Why was I born into the world, and who, the, who am I anyway? And then this, this ninth book, that comes along, which was unexpected. As you know, Neil tells this whole story. Home with God was supposed to be the end. And then unexpectedly there in 2016 in the summer, he gets that familiar tap on the shoulder, which was God saying, we're gonna write a book. And Neil says, what are we, we, I I thought this discussion was over. Why, what what are we writing another book about? Why are we here? And, And God opens the book with about half of your planet, Earth, is knocking my door down with prayer. Prayer about what? Prayer about the continuation of your species on earth. Is there some path to uh, a sustainable, flourishing planet so our kids and future generations have some a home, some place to live? So, Neil, this and, is and, what we're going to talk about. some way to complete not only, not only a home and some place to live, but I want to make clear to everybody that the purpose of life is much larger than what you're experiencing in your physical reality. So it's not just, oh, let's just create a wonderful earth and a nice place to live for our children and our grandchildren. It's about, is there any way to create a sustainable environment within which human beings can complete, or even approach for that matter, the agenda of the soul, which has so little to do with your physical life, but is, how would I put this, becomes functional through your physical life. That's why we came here to physicality. So I I don't want people to think, oh, it's just a lovely idea so that we can have a better life for everybody. You know, we can all live the good life. It goes way past that. It goes to a place where we become consciously aware of why we're even here in the realm of physicality and and what happens after we leave here and how does that all fold together in a way that produces, yes, the kind of a life that we can gladly pass on to our children and our grandchildren and allowing them to know that there's more going on here than meets the eye. This is not just about, you know, what I was told by my culture when I was 10 or 12 or 14 years old. Get the car, get the girl, get the job, get the house, get the wife, get the children, get the better job, get the better house, get the better car, get the more kids, you know, then finally get the office in the corner with your name on the door, get the building on the corner with your name on the building, and then get the gray hair, get the sickness and get that, get out. See, there's more, there's, there's so much more going on here than that little process that I was taught by my culture when I was in my mid teens. Boy, it took me until I was 55 years old to come to an awareness of that. Now, we don't have to wait until you're half a century old. And that's what this is all about. That's what this activist training is all about. And that's what the campaign Changing Humanity's Future is all about. So I just, excuse the interruption, Steve, but I didn't want people to think, oh, we're trying to find a way to just to create a more wonderful life on Earth. Yes, but why? What is the purpose of that? And the purpose of that is to create an environment within which we can all complete the agenda of the soul. Yes, you know, thank you. Uh, and boy, this is uh, right there in the book, throughout the book, in fact, throughout the series, this is what's brought through is is actually don't focus on just changing the world. Keep the focus inward. Focus on your own personal evolution. And uh, so our activist training, this is where it goes. It's, a, it's going into our own personal evolution. Uh, the, the very, but by the way, uh, for those that aren't familiar with the initiative, if you go to changinghumanitiesfuture.org, changinghumanitiesfuture.org, the whole initiative is laid out there. There are subpages that get into confirmations of a conscious reality. There are pages that are action steps. Uh, then there's the main page. So uh, check it out. 
This is, as Neil was sharing just uh, when, we, when we were beginning this program, this truly is the most important initiative in the world today. Uh, this is what uh, Conversations with God Book 4 says. If, if we want to con continue uh, the kind of level of, of physical rea reality that we have with the beauty and blessing and so on <clears throat> that we enjoy individually and collectively, <clears throat> that now is the time because we can't just keep going on living the way we are and expect that things are going to change. <clears throat> they won't. So, um, so the first, <clears throat> the first um, action step, Neil, that came right out of uh, book four is Listen to the still quiet voice that is God guiding you from within. So this is going to this whole personal evolution thing. Um, this, this is sacred text has been talking about this. This is, this is one of these truths for millennia, isn't it? Yes, and, and I, I think that people uh, have not really gotten to a place, that is the largest number of people, have not gotten to a place yet um, where we do listen to that, to that, you know, and uh, that wonderful phrase, we've all heard that phrase, we talk about the still small voice within. You know, God is talking to us all the time, as Steve mentioned a few moments ago. You know, we're, we're having conversations with God all the time. We should be calling it something else. You know, sometimes if we get a brilliant idea in the middle of the night, we say, I had a brilliant idea in the middle of the night. We call an epiphany, you know, or an inspiring moment. Or some people call it maybe women's intuition, you know, or, or whatever words we can use to describe this ongoing input that we are receiving from God. And I want to make it real clear about something here. We're not receiving this from someplace outside of us. It's not that God is talking down to us. God is within us. That is the essence of that which we call divinity. Resides within every sentient being in the cosmos. <clears throat> so when you feel that wisdom coming to you, it's not just coming to you, it's coming through you. It already resides within you. So I want to just put, s s set one, one idea aside, if I can, here at the beginning of our program today. Many people think that life is a school, and we're here to learn. And, and then once we learn what we need to learn, you know, but but I want to tell tell you what the activist training is. It's it's not to teach you anything. It's to remind you of what you already know. See, because we what we already see, divinity resides deep within each of us, and we're simply calling it forth from within. That's what the activist training is about. It's about showing you how you can call forth the wisdom, the clarity, the compassion, the love, the understanding the awareness that already resides within you. When I said to God, wait, wait, wait a minute, you know, in, in my conversations, you know, when I, when I was writing this down, I was having this wonderful dialogue with divinity. And I said, but everyone tells me that life is a school. And God said, no, they're wrong. Life is not a school. There's nothing for you to learn. I said, how, how, how can you say that? God said, Neil. Is there a tree anywhere near you? Can you look out your window and see any trees anywhere? I said, yeah, there's a tree right outside the front of my house. It's a beautiful oak tree, you know, 50, 35, 25 feet high, beautiful canopy. God said, what has the tree learned? Since it was a seed, no bigger than your little fingernail. And I said, well, it hasn't learned anything. It's just grown into itself. And God said, ah, are you trying to tell me that everything this, that that tree needed to know to become this beautiful specimen of life was encoded, implanted in that seed no bigger than your fingernail? And I said, well, I, I suppose you could put it that way. And God said, and if I so love the tree, would I not all the more love you? You think I sent you out there with no information? Good luck. Have a good time. I hope you, I hope you do okay. I gave you all the information you needed. I put a part of what I am inside of you and every sentient being in the cosmos. This is about calling it forth, not reaching outside of yourself to try to get it from some other place. This is about calling it forth from within you. And if that intrigues you, that whole idea, then you really want to pay attention to the activist training, because that's what we're talking about.
training you how to go within and find what you already understand. And one last word about that. You know that you already understand how to love unconditionally. How many of you have ever held a baby in your arms, a six week old or a 10 week old baby in your arms? You know how to love unconditionally. All you have to do is understand that the whole world is populated by 10 week old babies. That's right. They're just, some of them are grown up. Absolutely. Yeah. So beautiful. And um, just, you know, we, we grow up in this world where the Ken Wilbur, you know, with his all quadrants, all levels uh, diagram shares the whole focus is what we're talking about here, outer world. And the inner world just lost its place, its priority, its focus. Um, he calls that a flatland where we, this American dream thing, where it's all about the outer world and all about this, this whole bigger, better, more thing. That, uh, and that corner office, this thing that Neil was talking about earlier. And, and conversations with God's just bringing us back to, you know, to remember, you know, why you wanted to physicalize in the first place. That, that's the beauty of the discussion. It gets into that discussion around, you know, why did we, if we were there as a part of the one in the afterlife, non-physicalized, why in the world would we come down here to uh, planet Earth? And it, it gets into such a beautiful discussion to be, because we're in this uh, physical container where we have uh, dark with light and tall with short. And, and now we get to not just know that we're the light, we, we, we can be the light. This is where we choose be in the light. I love the discussion in the book where it says it's not just about knowing that you're divinity, it's claiming it, it's being it, it's expressing it, it's doing something with it, it's choosing it. That yes, of course, we all are divinity itself. That's when, and, and we physicalized and why. And it's such a beautiful discussion where it goes to this whole, you were using this parade example, Neil, which is beautiful, where, you know, you're, yes, uh, you know, that's what leadership is, not follow me. I'll go first. I'm going to go right out near the front of the parade. I'm, I'm going to live this to the best of my ability. And this, uh, so some of this activist training, it's beautiful. Here again, coming straight from book four, Awaken the Species, it shares that as we're, as we're stretching into this, as we're embracing this process, to share the things that, we're, that are working, where we're making progress, and to be... Uh, honest and share where where it's still quite challenging because it is for 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 all of us right I don't know anybody that says I'm there and actually what conversations with God says there's no there there you know the spiral staircase just keeps going up you know it deepens right so uh, so just just this activist training is beautiful it's sharing just uh, where we step out and we're living consciously where we understand we're a part of the one that that the universe is non-dual, what scientists are sharing also, and meaning that it's benevolent, not malevolent. Uh, there are scientists also sharing the whole universe is in harmony, right? This is what Nassim Harriman and Greg Braden are sharing. Um, so we're, we're just understanding these, these basic uh, fundamentals of life and embracing them and embodying them, expressing them in our homes, in our workplace, out in the world, and then you know, again, bringing in the things that we struggle with, because we all do. Neil, you bring in, you know, examples with your wife, M. Uh, uh, there are plenty of, uh, boy, the 20 years in humanities team. In fact, Neil and I were laughing here in the green room coming in, <laughs> where we were talking about challenges here in the early days of humanities team. We, uh, Neil, uh, the, the book, Tomorrow's God, actually lays out the whole founding of humanities team. It's beautiful. We're Neil and and God are, are talking about the founding of Humanities Team. And, I, and then I helped him launch it there in Wilsonville, Oregon, back in June 2003. And God, did I make a lot of mistakes and still do. You know, it's not, uh, there's not any perfection here. Uh, what it's about is just doing, really being resilient. Uh, I want to always say there's nothing but to the best of our ability. Yeah. You know, when I hear all the talk about what a struggle it is, I've heard the word struggle and challenge used a lot in the past 20 minutes. I don't want people to think, well, you know, this, whoa, you know, this really is a struggle. Steve is right. Everybody is struggling and this is really a challenge for everybody to meet. And, you know, guys, if this 
way of moving through the world was not applicable in a practical way in our lives, if it was not reachable, if it was not something we could actually experience without tons of struggle and incredible challenge, and will we ever get there? And and there's no there there. There's nowhere there there. You know, there's a cute little phrases, but I got to let you know that if there's no way to get there in our life, then the great spiritual masters of all time were charlatans. They were con men. They were selling us a bill of goods that we couldn't achieve. So I don't want you to feel that way. There is a way to get there. Now, when it's, when Steve says there's no there there, what he means is that as soon as you get there, you have a yearning for, a desire for, a great, a, a great um, uh, idea about how you can even increase what what there looks like, and it can become even bigger and larger and more and grander and more wonderful. But there is a way to get there, and that's what the activist training is about. So don't think there's no there there. There is a there there. The there is what the activist training is all about. We're telling you that it does not have to be the biggest struggle of your life. It does not have to be the biggest challenge you ever faced. It, it can really be as simple as finding your way to who you truly are. Finding your way to yourself, capital S. And that's possible for all of us. All the great spiritual masters have told us that. And they weren't lying to us. They were telling us the truth. So come with us on the activist training and train your mind to start thinking the way those who have been there already have shared with us and how we can be there. Oh, and by the way, <clears throat> I have to laugh a couple of times because Steve keeps on mentioning book four, book four, book four, book four. And but he said at least three times it's the ninth book in the series. And I can imagine somebody in, in Palo Alto, California going, wait a minute, if it's the ninth book in the series, why is it called Conversation with God Book Four? Good question. The publishers decided that it was because it was the fourth book with the title Conversations with God on top. The other books were called, you know, Friendship with God, Communion with God, Home with God, and various other titles. But there were only three other books prior to this one with the title Conversations with God, even though they were all dialogues. So the publisher insisted on calling it Conversations with God, book four, even though it's the ninth book in the series. So there are eight other books ahead of that. And the reason I bring that up is because the activist training is about taking what was in those prior eight other books, and as well as what's contained in book number nine, which we call book number four, and, and bringing it all together in a way that we can assimilate it and demonstrate it, assimilate it and experience it, take it in and project it out into the world. You know what? There's a reason why you're watching this program here right now today. If you think it's a coincidence that you just happen to be here, think again. No kidding. Yeah. So, and this whole deliciousness of life, it's true. Uh, boy, you know, so, and let me come back to this activist training. The, the very first, uh, when you go to changinghumanitiesfuture.org and you click on the action steps, um, the very first one, as we mentioned earlier, is listen to that still, quiet voice that is God guiding you from within. And uh, this, this was the thing back in the 90s, you know, when I read Conversations with God, book one. This is the thing where I said, okay, I'm going to embrace that teaching. And, and once we decide that it's the soul, it's that soul level, that interior level calling that we're going to follow, not, not just the mind and body and what its pleasures might be. Uh, boy, that's where this whole deliciousness of life thing happens, where, where we uh, allow that voice to lead us. Uh, and that's what this conscious living thing is, where the, the, you could call it uh, another word for God could be omnipresence and omniscience and omnipotence, right? This is what even religions will refer to these three that go together. Uh, and where we breathe into that uh, from our interior, uh, where we where we decide we're going to follow that calling, uh, and not just again the the outer world callings. Oh boy, um, and and this is again in this activist training, 
this is where the beauty of the whole thing comes together. Our own, we talk about our own personal evolution. I mean, we really come into it uh, in, uh, in our relationships with our partner and with our kids. In the workplace where we start now looking with new eyes out at the world instead of just top and bottom line growth, it's all monetary instead. Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with, with uh, the monetary, but where it needs to start of course, with this whole sacred, with this whole beneficial, I'm gonna, we're gonna do beneficial things. We're gonna nurture and support community and the world. Uh, and then, yes, monetary, uh, because the business will fold without the monetary. But where uh, I was in Silicon Valley and before uh, coming into conversations with God, uh, I, I think I was probably looking more at the whole just top and bottom line growth of the business. Uh, and then, uh, could see that uh, started looking at it with new eyes of what can we do that's beneficial for our community. We adopted a high school. Uh, we, I was in South San Francisco and uh, boy, we were watching the most brilliant teachers there in South San Francisco, which is very poor, or at least it was at the time. And then the surrounding, there were San Mateo and these areas, Palo Alto, where all of the wealth was. And what was happening is, is those schools in Palo Alto, Menlo Park, were grabbing the, the, the best teachers from South San Francisco and just taking them to these better pay and better schools. And, and then, so South San Francisco would get worse and worse and worse. And we came in and just started providing all of our technology and things for free, the products for free, the services for free, just trying to help them a little bit. Uh, and, you know, this is this whole thing where uh, in when we're, conscious and we're following our soul's calling, this is, in fact, this is one of the uh, things in conversations with God where it defines what conscious living is. And it says, we're focusing on the beneficial, you know. What can we do that's beneficial for the surrounding community and for the world? And yes, let's make sure the business stays healthy and it's making money, but it's, it's getting our priorities right instead of this whole outer world focus that's all about uh, this whole bigger office, a bigger home you know, all of these kinds of things that uh, uh, I can tell you from living in Silicon Valley, there's no, there's no, no real happiness there. That's a mirage, that American dream. In fact, there's a, there's a question here I should bring in as, I, as I'm talking about this, where Hilda is saying in book two of Conversations with God, you talk about foreign policy uh, in chapter 10. Isn't it a little late to heal America? Actually, this is bringing a foreign policy twist, but she says, isn't it a little late to heal America, uh, whether foreign policy or something else? And, and this whole initiative, Changing Humanity's Future, it's about starting with ourselves and our homes and our community. And yes, America and the whole world might be a good question for you. Neil, is it a little late to heal anything? Yes, it's too late. The game is over by, by five o'clock this afternoon. The whole thing is going to fall apart. There's nothing else you can do. So you might as well just, just forget about everything. <laughs> don't... don't, don't uh, of course, it's not too late. Of course, it's not a little late. It's, it's, it, it is, in fact, just the right time. <clears throat> this is, <clears throat> excuse me, we, we have been told in Conversations with God, book four, book number nine <laughs> in this series, we've been told that this is the perfect time for us to move forward and for us to really leap forward uh, in the advancement of our civilization, in our embracing of and living into and demonstration of who we really are. It's the perfect time, precisely because so many of the conditions are calling us to heal what's going on. I've never seen this many conditions, uh, a confluence of, of so many circumstances that are ripe for the healing. So, you know, the best surgeons in the world cannot be the best surgeons in the world, just to, to use a kind of a bad metaphor, but it helps us to understand it. And I had open heart surgery a few years ago, and I, as, as it turned out, just because of the rotation of rotation of surgeons that day, I wound up getting the man who was reputed to be one of the finest heart surgeons in America. And he happens to live in the community that I live in because it's a wonderful community that people like to uh, find themselves in and call home. So, and he did this this surgery. But you know what? He 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 would have nothing to do. He would have nothing to heal. No one to no one to heal 
if people didn't come to him with the kind of problem that I had. I needed immediately open heart surgery. So, and there he was in in just the right place at just the right time with just the right skills. That's what's going on now in the world. The world needs a little bit, if you'll excuse the expression, the world could use a little bit of open heart surgery. We can open our hearts and open the hearts, not just the hearts of America, but the hearts of the world at large, of people everywhere. We can open our hearts to each other. It's time for some open heart surgery. And you're the surgeon who can perform this surgery. That's why you're here. Do you think you came here at this time and in this place by coincidence? By, by sheer happenstance? Do you think it's serendipity that you happen to be here at this point in humanity's history? No. You are here at this point by appointment. You've made an appointment. Your soul said, you know what? Send me down there at a time when I can do the most good for the most people and touch people's lives in a way that could change everything and help in the advancement of this particular species that we call humanity. So no, it's not a little too late. It's the perfect time. And now is the time for you to step into the role that you were designed and called upon to play. I could, of course, be wrong about all of this, but I don't think so. I don't think so. No, um, this book, Awaken the Species, it says we're one decision away. Like you say, that this is the perfect time for advancement. These are And these are all capitalized as they're shared. It is it is true. This is our moment. And so the, the question here now for all of us, for, for you viewers that are here with us is, will you help awaken the species? Will you help do that? That's what changing humanity's future is about. And it and as we're sharing, it actually is all turned around and it starts with ourself of this whole remembering process that we're, that we're talking about here. Uh, so let's go take a look at, there's a video segment here. Now this is from uh, uh, the Global Oneness Summit last year. Neil and I were on a panel together uh, and Neil shares some uh, insight here. Let's go to this about two minute video and then Neil and I'll come back and talk about it. I want to emphasize that the, I don't pretend to be, you know, the greatest professor of all time who knows everything. You know, I only know what I know because I've had the opportunity to specifically remember. And the classes that I have offered that Tim is referring to are remembrances. They're, they're memory joggers, really. You're going, to, you're going to love the classes because you're going to sign up for one of them and you're going to go, yes, of course. Of course, I always knew that. I always remembered that. And it's going to bring that memory forward again in your day-to-day -day experience. That's what I try to do in each of those modules, to jog your memory, that you might know who you really are and what is really possible for all of us. So take a look at those programs one by one and see if they don't do exactly for you what the Conversations with God experience did for me, which is to remind me of what I already know. Let me give you a little metaphor, and then I'll I'll stop here, but I want to just share a metaphor. I, because, you know, I said to God, you know, I, how, how, in my conversation with God, how does it all work? You know, tell me, tell me what I need to know. And God said, it's already within you. you. You don't need to be a seeker. It's already within you. Just be the source of it by sharing it with others. And as you share with others what you already know through the living of your life in a particular way, you discover that you're knowing of it. You become aware that, oh, I knew that all along. I said, God, you know, I don't, I don't understand how that could be true. Help me understand how that could be true. And so God said to me, Neil, is there a tree outside your window? I said, yeah, there is a tree out there. And God said, is it a big tree? I said, yeah, it's a pretty big oak tree. It's about 25, 30 feet tall. It's a magnificent oak tree with a wonderful canopy. God said, what has that tree learned over the time of its life? I said, well, I don't think that it's learned anything. It's just grown into itself. God said, really? Are you telling me, Neil, 
that everything that the tree needed to know to grow into that magnificent oak outside your window was seeded, implanted in the seed when the seed was no bigger than your fingernail? Are you telling me that I got implanted in that seed everything the tree needed to know to become the magnificent specimen of life that it is? I said, yeah, that's that's pretty much my understanding. And God looked at me and said, Neon, if I so love the tree, would I not all the more love you? Okay, an important point. I'm glad we're bringing it around a second time because uh, we need Let to. Let me tell you the story the third time. There's a tree outside my window. Oh, okay, twice is enough. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's such a it, it, you know it's important because Neil, as you share, right? I mean. Uh, even on the conscious journey, we're all saying all the time, even on social media, no, life is a school. And this is saying, no, life is not a school. So this is, this is an important point, and it's worth bringing around a second time. Let me just share briefly here, because uh, Neil's referring to modules. So Neil has two uh, master classes at the present time on the Humanity Stream Plus platform. One is called Our Final Frontier. There are 24 modules where it distills a lot of the most uh, important wisdom from the from the nine conversations with God books down. It's called Our Final Frontier, and then he has uh, another one that's that's uh, called Discover Your Soul's Purpose. It's with Michael Bernard Beckwith, and he has he has uh, uh, eight of the modules, and Michael has eight of the modules. Those are on the Humanity Stream Plus platform, and I'll just also say he actually now has over ninety uh, video trainings on the Humanity Stream Plus platform. I'm, I'm mentioning these things, one, because these programs are extraordinary. I mean, they are extraordinary. Uh, and second, uh, Neil has a, a lot of incredible wisdom, even beyond just the two master classes on the platform. And this Changing Humanity's Future initiative, what's at the middle of it, is Humanity Stream Plus, because we're a nonprofit, a 501c3, and we've been reducing the price and reducing it again uh, and now offering a monthly, and now because we're a nonprofit, a one for one program where we give it away half the time. Every person that subscribes to the platform creates a free subscription for somebody out in the world that's underprivileged, underserved, and can't can't afford it. Uh, so uh, this and 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 there are thousands of paths to the mountaintop. We're getting to some of what we believe is the the central or center wisdom which is in this activist training that Neil and I are creating. But, you know, there's, there's, there's Hindu uh, paths, Buddhist paths, there are atheist paths, there are agnostic paths, there, uh, there, 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 there are uh, hundreds of paths to the mountaintop. Conversations with God says, this is about being inclusive. There is no, you know, let's do away with dogma. This whole notion that God said and thou shalt, uh, that, that day's gone, <laughs> right, Neil? There, you know, it's it's we. You have to, if you don't go within, you go without. What what God's even saying throughout the series? Don't take my word for it. Take if if take this wisdom, bring it within, hold it, and then you decide. Does does this wisdom mean something to you? And if yes, then embrace it and do something with it. And if not, discard it. Right. This is this is uh, what's recommended right in the Conversations with God text. I think I think what's said is that. Um, recent surveys, by the way, of anthropologists have taken surveys around the world uh, in the past 10 years. And recent surveys in virtually every uh, culture on the planet have been taken. And they had a one question survey, most unusual. Most surveys ask more than one question, but this was designed to get to a particular statistic as rapidly as possible. <clears throat> so the questioners were invited to ask one simple question all around the world. So they stopped people on the street, in shopping centers, you know, in restaurants, wherever they could find people. And they asked people one question. Do you believe in a higher power? 8.5 statistically out of every 10 people said yes. I, I believe in a higher power. Yeah, there's, there's more going on here than we might think. Yeah, I believe in a higher power. But what's sad is, even though almost 85% of human beings believe there's a power higher, greater than us, we cannot come to an agreement about that higher power. 
We can't come to an agreement about what it is, what it wants, what it does, if it doesn't get what it wants. And or and most importantly, most critically of all, how to use that higher power. That's what the activist training is all about. It really answers those questions. And it takes the sadness out of our present experience. It's what I call the God solution. There must be a solution to all of this. Wait a minute. Can't we come to an agreement on what that higher power is, what it does, what it wants, if anything, what it does, if it doesn't get what it wants, and most importantly, how we can use it? That's what would change humanity's future. That's what would change everything on our planet if we could come to a single understanding of all of that. And it doesn't mean that we all have to throw out all the doctrines and dogmas that we've gathered from our religions. But see, it, I want to make this point. I've said it before, and I want to say it again if I can today. It's not my position that all of our world's religions have it wrong. By the way, there are 4,300 faith traditions being practiced on the planet today. But it's, it's not our idea that all of those religions have it wrong. I'm simply suggesting <clears throat> that they may be incomplete. You know, they're, they're, maybe there's more to know on this subject. And that's why I keep running around the world asking a simple question. Is it possible, just possible, that there's something we don't fully understand here? about God, about life, and about ourselves, and about each other? And if the answer to that question is, yes, I guess it's possible. There may be more information than we now have. All the holy books in the world don't have all the holy information in the universe. There's more to be known on this subject. It takes an idea hero to embrace such a thought. Because we want to believe, no, no, you don't understand. It's all there in the book. Neil, be quiet. It's all there in the book. It's right there in the Bhagavad Gita. I, I mean the Book of Mormon. I, I mean the the, 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 the Upanishads. I, I mean the, the Bible, of course. It's in the Bible. No, 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 wait. It's in the Quran. No, 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 wait. It's in the Talmud. Whatever. Or is it possible that all the books together bring us great wisdom and great insight, but that there's more to know on this subject? And I think the answer is yes. And what there is more to know resides within the depth of every one of us. If we simply learn how to go within and find out the highest answer to the greatest questions that have faced humanity through all these many years, that's a process called evolution. And it's what's occurring on the planet right now. And you have an opportunity to engage in that process. And there are certain steps you can take. Yes, there are. That's what the activist training is all about. To see if we can't share with each other some of the steps that have worked. Steps that have worked for me. Steps that have worked for us. And you know what? And they may not, they're not necessarily the final steps either. But there are opportunities for us to step off on the path to the place of greater consciousness, where we can really truly change humanity's future and produce the outcome that we came here to physicality to produce, to experience. You know, we're not here for no reason. We're not here just to kind of get by. We're, I mean, when I say we, I mean all the people on the planet. Who are we? See, this is not who I am. I'm not a body. I'm not a mind. These are things I have. But who I am is a soul, a spirit. I believe that I am a spiritual entity. So why have I come here to this place? Ah, let that be our question for the day. Did I really come here to get the job, get the guy, get the girl, get the car, get the better job, get the better car, get the better house? No, no, no. That's just stuff I'm doing. And it has very little to do with why I came to the physical world. That's a huge question. You know, humanity has been asking that question for thousands of years. But the answer does not have to be illusory. We can find that answer. We can hear that answer when we go within. That's what the activist training is all about. Opening the space where you can hear the answer within. Because if you don't go within, you go without. 
you will go without the great secrets of the universe and you'll live your whole life. And, you know, when you're lying there, if you're if you do are lucky enough to live to be a ripe old age like this guy over here, I'm going to be pretty old pretty soon. I'm pretty old right now. So when you're lying with your head in the pillow in the last moments of your life, do you want to be saying, what in the world was this all about? I don't, I don't get it. What was I doing here? What's the point of it all? I hope not. I hope that's not going to be satisfying to you and satisfactory with you. I hope that you'll dive deep within to find more of those answers and then to share them with everyone whose life you touch. And that's what the activist training program will give you an opportunity to do. Just one more path. It's not the path. It's not the only path. It's not the right path. Any more than there is one right religion. Oh, I hope I didn't offend somebody just now. I hope you're not one of those who says, Neil, Neil, I've been listening to you, but there is only one right religion, only one way. And if you don't take that particular pathway, you're not only not going to get where you want to go, you're going to go the other way. You're going to go down here this way, down to, you know, there is no down there. Wouldn't you be surprised to find out that there's no such place as down there? Do you really believe that God has created a hell? And that if you don't come to God through one particular doorway, doesn't matter how kind you are, doesn't matter how wonderful you are, doesn't matter how compassionate you are, how forgiving you are, how gentle you are, how generous you are, and it certainly doesn't matter how loving you are. None of those things matter. If you come to God through the wrong doorway, you're going to hell. Really? Really? This is the God we believe in, and then we wonder why the world is the way it is? Is it possible, just possible, that there's something we don't completely understand here? I think there is. And that's why we're here today inviting you to become part of this process called Changing Humanity's Future and to engage in the activist training program that will at least move you in the direction of exploration. We need to move in the direction of exploration, not settle in with what we've been told for these thousands of years. If what we've been told for these thousands of years was all there is to know on this subject, I promise you the world would be in a much better place than we find it in today. So there's some data missing. All the information is not there. Join with us in the exploration of that missing data. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, boy, here's where there is true prosperity, you know, a real deliciousness in life where we where we really come to understand who we are why we're here and what what our invitation in life is which is what this gets into and the, the training is so important you know, that uh, we've never done this before and I in the transformational education space I was you know we've thought about this inside of humanities team we don't recall uh, any organization ever taking a full-on 16 module master class, and we're calling it an activist training because it's a more accurate way to describe it. It's activist training uh, so that we can live consciously fully and so that we can be uh, in that parade, even out front in that parade, and inviting others to be a part of the parade, to live consciously also and have it spread all over the earth so that this download that we got when we created this initiative that we make conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040, which is 17 and a half years away. Uh, that's, that's not that uh, long from now. And so uh, we said, well, let's, let's then uh, create uh, a 16 module program that really goes down into the deep on all of the most essential things that we can uh, be and do uh, to live our lives consciously. And let's then just get it out in the world. Let's, let's, even create a social media campaign so people all over the world can learn about this program and download it for free. 
Uh, so that's what we're doing. Right now, we're uh, early in the process. We've designed the program uh, together with Neil, and uh, soon we'll record the program, and then we'll, we'll come out and, and uh, we'll watch it uh, together in viewing rooms, and we'll uh, talk about it and get people's perspective on it and answer questions and things. Uh, but uh, so look forward to that here right around the May time frame, activist training for changing humanity's future. And uh, we're, we're just real excited about it and uh, appreciate uh, Neil's partnership here on this one. Uh, our, our big, big thing here in the first half of the year. Let me go to some questions that are here. Um, so this is a comment from Sean. She says, thank you for that, Neil. My hubby had open heart surgery right at the start of COVID and so much of our calling has come since then. So kind of echoing maybe some of the good things that you brought in with your own uh, surgery. So, and then uh, Patricia says at 81, I want my heart to sing out in the world inside out. It's never, never too late. And Patricia and Sean are both right here in the green room uh, with us. So um, now Zach says, I think home with God is also very timely given the crisis in Turkey and Syria. Uh, your thoughts on that, Neil? Well, I, I agree, of course, and the point of Home with God, if you haven't read the book, it's a wonderful dialogue that approaches the topic of life after what we call death. And the point uh, that Home with God makes is that there's really no such thing as death in the classic sense of us see simply ceasing to exist or to be able to experience ourselves individually as who we are. So um, we are told in home with God. Now, this is a tough one. You know, so, uh, you know, when I say these kinds of things, you have to understand that taken out of context, especially after what's happened in Turkey and Syria, to say nothing of what's going on in Ukraine and elsewhere in the world, where smaller but s similar kinds of tragedies are occurring in the everyday life of people. To say what I'm going to say may sound a bit difficult to embrace or to accept. But here's what we are told in Home with God. By the way, the subtitle of Home with God is Home with God in a Life That Never Ends. And what we're told in that book is no one dies at a time or in a way that is not of their choosing. Such a thing would be impossible given who and what you really are. If you really are a spiritual entity, and if the spiritual entity that you are really is an individuation of divinity, then you could not be victimized at the spiritual level by anything, any event, any circumstance, any situation that is occurring in your eternal life. Boy, this is a daring thing for me to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> any more than some of the great masters that we've listened to could be victimized, even though in their physical form, their life was brought to an end. In fact, one of those wonderful spiritual masters overcame that by saying, I know you see that my life ended, but let me show you something. Watch this. And he came to life again. To give us a visual, vivid demonstration that life is eternal, that life never ends. And and, and when his disciples were, were aghast, amazed at what had happened, he said to them, why are you so amazed? These things and more shall you do also. Now, I mean, again, I want to make the point, was he a con man? Was he saying stuff to us that's simply and blatantly untrue? Or was he saying things as have all the great masters who have led all the world's great spiritual traditions? Is he saying things that all the masters have told us from the very beginning? So, home with God tells us that life never ends. Life goes on forever and ever in the metaphysical form and that we move through various what I call stages of life, or perhaps I call them realms. I was told in Home with God that there are three realms in the kingdom of God. The realm of the physical, the realm of the spiritual, and the realm of pure being. 
So pick up that book and take a look at it, and you'll have the answer to what we would say to people who are mourning the loss of their loved ones in Turkey and Syria, in Ukraine, or elsewhere around the world. Do not mourn them. They're experiencing life in a grander way you could ever imagine. You can mourn your loss and the fact that they're gone from your physical experience. Yes, indeed, you can. And we can create a world in, in which such unnecessary departure never again have to occur. Yes, we can create that kind of a world. Even a world that can eliminate some of the natural disasters that are occurring on the planet. I'm so glad we had a chance to be here today. Thanks for your opportunity, or for giving me, I should say, the opportunity to share this time with you. Thank you, Neil. Yes, so, and we'll uh, end this. We One of the points we've come around to a few times is that we're this is the perfect time for advancement, that this is that we're one decision away. Another thing that's said in this Awaken the Species book is the hardest part of the journey is behind us. <laughs> behind us. So let's keep going. You know, uh, activist training coming out. We are, man, we are stretching into this. Uh, this is happening. So, and I know, I know you know that, and that's why you're here. Uh, and I just, Neil, thank you so much for being with us here today. What a fantastic hour. It went fast, just as we said it would. Uh, and viewers, thank you so much for being here with us. And uh, Neil will be back with us here again soon. This uh, Changing Humanity's Future initiative, the, the activist training, these are only some of the important things that are just uh, ahead. Lots of uh, good things going on this year. We are, this, this parade, by the way, is, is there are lots of people in it. This thing is moving forward. And I'm sure a lot of you uh, will are, are already a part of the parade or plan to join. Uh, let's just parade this thing all over the world. And that's how by 2040, you know, in our homes, in our communities, in the United States, and yes, all over the world, we, uh, we're living consciously this so-called heaven on earth. We create it right here, right now. At, uh, that's, this is another beautiful point in conversations with God. This isn't about suffering through this life and for the afterlife. <laughs> Create it here now. That's the, that's the point. That's what we're doing here. Creating it here now. So again, thank you, Neil. Thank you, viewers, uh, for being with us. Neil will be back with us here real soon. And uh, I'll see you next week. Uh, Michael Bernard Beckwith is going to be with me uh, next week as we talk about uh, this uh, Discover Your Soul's Purpose program that, that he created with uh, Neil Donald Walsh. So uh, be sure to be with us at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern next week. Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, oh, let me just, let's pull the camera back real quick. I always like to give credit to the team. Uh, I've got Jim Gray here in the studio. I'm, that's me on the couch. That's Jim over there who's producing the program. Jim, thank you. We didn't, uh, didn't have any technical glitches here. So uh, thanks for that. Also, Nanette Kennedy, D. Meyer, Andy Gooski, Garth Catterall, uh, all of my, my partners and colleagues here in the Humanities Team. Thank you guys for uh, helping to make this program possible. Okay, have a great week, and uh, we'll see you again next week, everybody. Actually, I'm going to be back on the air uh, today at uh, 12 noon Pacific again. Today, yeah. So Tr Tricia McMahon, so, uh, who uh, is, is pretty extraordinary. Yeah, we don't do, we infrequently do a second one on the same Wednesday, and today's one of them. So I'll, I'll be back on the air uh, at 12 noon Pacific, and uh, join us for that program. <laughs> okay. Thanks again, everybody. Love and peace and blessings. Namaste.